This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. It is a pleasure to be back in the studio with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're new to our program, we want to welcome you. You're going to get a lot of terrific information here on the show. Each and every week, we dive into the topics that are affecting you as a pre-retiree or a, a recent retiree. And if that's you, congratulations. We want to make sure your retirement is fantastic. You've worked so hard. We want to make sure that you're utilizing all the tips and strategies that Kirk and Paul share to help you get that retirement that you have dreamt about. The phone number, if you're ready to find out more, if you want to get registered for an upcoming course, and these are courses that are taught by the foundation, you're welcome to do that right now. That number is 800-240-8981. You can also go to the website to learn more about the courses, and we'll be telling you about them throughout the hour. That web address, retirementplanningedu.org. Now, Kirk and Paul, it's great to be back with you. You know, we're all human. We all make mistakes, don't we? But you say there are some retirement mistakes that, number one, we should know about, and number two, we can actually avoid these things. Let's dive in. What are we talking about today? Well, there, there are many, so we're going to try to cover as many as we can today. Um, this idea for the show really centers around something we do in our TV show uh, that we, we record every two weeks, a TV show. And in that TV show, it's, we have a, a segment. It's become very popular. It's, it's called They Say. And they say represents myths, misconceptions, half-truths, mistakes, often not at the fault of the retiree, but created and driven by the financial service industry. So today we're going to tackle many of those they say myths, misconceptions, half-truths, mistakes that so many retirees are going to stumble into. And, and unfortunately, Paul, a lot of these mistakes they're going to stumble into are going to occur when it's too late. It's too late to change the course, to fix the problem. Really, Paul, one of the biggest problems is the mistake of way under living what they otherwise could be living on because they don't have a plan and they don't understand what the res their resources will actually provide for them in retirement. No, exactly. You know, Kirk, as I was just, I mean, much of this we know, right? We talk about these things, but as I was trying to do a little research on this, Here's a fascinating thing I've, I discovered, which is uh, the information out there via Google, you know, the information yep. out there is horrible. You would be amazed at what some people call mistakes. They're actually contradictions to the real mistakes. Like you need to spend less in retirement. You need to keep working until you, I mean, the, the, the recommendations out there for people by our industry is horrible. It's horrible. I mean, if I was just, if I was a consumer and I wanted to learn a little bit about what are the real, you know, what are the mistakes? And I started doing research. I'd be so confused. Well, it, that's the word I was going to use. It is incredibly confusing. Here, let's start with the basic is that most of the mistakes people are making is because they are following guidance that has been created to try to cover the majority of the people instead of specific people. So what do I mean? Well, look, the average baby boomer is going to retire with $200,000 saved for retirement. Yes, you can move your need, the, the knob around on the radio station to make sure you heard that clearly. The average baby boomer will retire only saving $200,000 saved for retirement. So if you have $2 million saved for retirement, you have 10 times the average person. And so when you are looking for information on Google, and reading all the so-called experts who have opinions on retirement, they're talking to the people that have $200,000 saved for retirement. Remember, we have about 40% of our baby boomers that generate most all of their income from Social Security. In other words, that's all they have. 40% of our baby boomers, that's all they have. So when they come out with these rules like the 4% rule or the rule of 100 or when you should take money out of which accounts, or what inflation looks like, they didn't, they're not talking to you. They're talking to the average baby boomer. And that is why we started our class. It's an eight-hour class taught at all the major universities. If you'd like to attend one of our classes, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. And you can attend by going to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Yeah, you know, Kirk, this idea that, that you know, the, the people listening 
believe they're the average consumer. They're the average retiree, really. I mean, I, I think that's an excellent point. And I, and I think you're right. Our industry really does cater to that, to that you know, p- people who have a couple hundred thousand dollars in retirement. But as, as you know, in the people we meet in our classes, that's not the people who attend our class, right? That's not no. the people who are listening because those people really don't have to do a lot of financial planning, right? If you have $200,000, there isn't a lot of things. The rules apply. Protect your principal. Exactly, exactly. You should only take out 4%. Exactly. It makes sense. Right. Right. But, but when you read this stuff, and it, it, it doesn't say that. Right. When you I when you it. read it, it doesn't say this only applies to those people. Right. It assumes everybody should follow these rules. This sort of one size fits all. Well, I think the other thing, Paul, is it, it, for a consumer who's trying to retire or in retirement or nearing retirement, who to believe who what to trust. The, the, Paul, your point is exactly right, Paul. There's there's contradictions of information. Google, while it's probably the greatest resource ever created, is also creates a tremendous amount of anxiety and confusion and forces people to do or causes people really to do nothing because they're not look every week I have somebody who for ten thousand dollars will go offers me to ghost write my book like I could have an insurance license be a sales insurance salesperson and now I'm a financial expert and someone will write a, a retirement book for me and all I have to do is pay them they'll write the book so, so everyone there thinks these people are experts and they're not. And at the end of the day, our, the financial service industry is motivated by one thing, Paul. That is profits, revenue, right? They want to be profitable. Everybody in our industry wants to make a living and make as much as they possibly can. And to make as much as you possibly can, you have to come up with strategies and ideas that are scalable, cookie cutter, one size fits all, generalized rules so that they can, they don't have to spend time planning. They can just spend time selling. In transactional in nature, and, and Paul, I, this is why ten years ago we started the the foundation, the Retirement Education Foundation, and started teaching these advanced courses. At we're now teaching at just about every major university: Oakland University, Mich- University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Eastern Michigan University. We're streaming them, streaming them live, so you can stay in your own home while we're teaching from the universities. To attend this course to understand how to construct your own customized plan for retirement. What all the levers you need to know are, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Here with Kirk and Paul. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I'm Megan Mozak. We're glad to have you aboard here on the Retirement Education Hour. Have you signed up for their courses yet? Now, these are courses that are sponsored by the foundation, and they're specifically designed for you if you're getting close to retirement. We want to set you up for success, and a deep dive into retirement planning is just the way to do it. So here's how to register. You can call The number to write down is 800-240-8981. Now, remember, these are courses that are taught at local universities here in our community, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And it's your choice. You can do a one-day, seven- to eight-hour course, or you can split that up over two days in person or virtually in the comfort of your own home. You can register online as well at Retirement Planning edu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Talking today about some of the retirement mistakes that you should avoid. And boy, there are a lot. But Kirk, we're really focusing on the big ones, aren't we? I think one of the big mistakes that we see a lot, Paul, in our courses is this idea people want to protect their principal. Right. I don't know why. Well, I do know we, why. We do know why. Because our industry has been promoting that your entire lives, that you need to protect your principal. And when we have a bad market event, spend less. Well, that makes their job pretty easy as an advisor, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> but, but it, Paul, that, that's, again, I think this protecting of principal is important for someone who only has $200,000 saved for retirement, not for the person who has resources. A person with resources, so you're suggesting to us, if you've saved two, three million dollars for retirement, and you tell me you want to protect your principal, that means you want to die still having two or three million dollars for your loved ones. And for a lot of people, I don't think that's the case. I think fear might drive that, but I don't think really that's the case. I think 
probably what's more likely, what most people want is a controlled spend down of their principal. Just don't let me outlive my income. And I think one one topic we should tackle here is the difference between your your money and your income. They're two different things because you can create an income stream that never stops between your social securities and pensions and different types of insurance products can create this, this income that never stops that also protects you against long-term care and health events. That's why the planning is so important. So you can have a controlled spend down of your principal and not allow all these short-term market events, political events, who's being elected, what's going on to impact what you spend and how you spend and when you spend it. You can't, you you spent 30, 40 years, Paul, working to have freedom in retirement and most retirees just, they have no freedom. Right. They, they have fear. Right. And, and, you know, in the in the courses, you know, you, you, you see that a lot, right? You hear this story time and time again, right? People who've ret- who have retired have been in retirement for several years, right? And, and aren't enjoying retirement, right? They're not really doing the things they want to do. They're constantly looking at the stock market, afraid, you know, their spending is, is completely controlled by these external factors because they believe they have to, they cannot spend down their principal, right? And, and it's a horrible, at the end of the day, if you're, if you're spending your 20, 30 years or how many years you're going to have in retirement and you're living in fear, that is a horrible way to live in retirement, right? And if you've saved a million, two million, three million dollars, there's no reason for that. Paul, the majority of retirees will live retirement in fear. That's yes. a fact. And that's why 76 trillion, I think people ignore when we start talking big numbers like this, $76 trillion will pass from this generation, the baby boomers, to the next generation. One, partially because they've been successful and there's a lot of wealth. But most importantly, I, we say it all the time in classes, Paul, old people aren't cheap. They're scared. You're going to be scared as things get, as you get older. Things are going to get more confusing. They're going to be more difficult to keep track of, especially around math and numbers. You need to empower yourself through education so you don't follow these stupid general rules our industry are promoting just so they can sell you something. Literally, that's it. I mean, that is the reason the course has started, right? I mean, at the end of the day, right, it really is about helping people change their relationship with money so they actually can enjoy it. Because how often do we meet people who aren't enjoying it because- a lot of these, it, it really, the single biggest issue is they're not, you know, most people are winging it in retirement. They're not really, they, no one has sat down and really show them how to plan for retirement. Paul, the problem is people don't think they're winging it because they're going to, air quotes, experts to go get help. And they're not getting help. They're getting a general one size fits all solution. You know, do this exercise. The 4% rule is a great one, Paul. Like they, It was the stupidest rule to begin with. It's still being used and promoted. Look, when you're 80 years old, whether you want it or not, the government is going to force you to take out approximately 6% out of your IRAs and your 401ks. You can't even live on a 4% rule. They're going to force you to take more. I think that's one of the bigger eye-opening parts of the class when it comes to income in retirement and what they should take in their 60s is it really happens when they recognize the amount they're going to be forced to take in their 70s and 80s, right? When we show people that come in and said, ah, I'm living on 4%, I've got $3 million, so I'm living on my $120,000 a year. And then we show them at 75, 80 years old, between their required minimum distributions, their Social Security, and if they have a pension, they're going to be forced to take $250,000 a year. They're thinking, well, I don't want it when I'm 75, 80 years old, 250000 I would much rather have had that when I was healthy in my 60s. But no one taught them they could have that, and no one taught them how to protect their income for the rest of their lives and set up a plan that addresses long-term care, all the sequence of return, market fluctuations, so they don't have to be scared every time there's something going on in our economy. Yeah. You said something I think was really key to the whole, to the whole point, which is most people actually think – they have a plan. So they think what they're doing, and some advisor told them this is what they should be doing. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they're supposed to be living in fear. And we, you know, I, I say that in part because I know, I know you feel this way. I sit down with people so often who say that to me, who say, listen, this is what my advisor told me. I'm supposed to be doing, this is how I've been taught. 
Th- because look at this plan I have, this beautiful plan I have. So most, the problem is most people don't recognize that what they have actually is not a plan. So they think this is what they're supposed to be doing. So I think that's the point, Paul. And that's why the foundation started teaching these exactly, courses. Exactly, that's right. I want to tell you, look, who is coming to the classes? People with resources. This is an advanced retirement planning course. These are engineers, faculty, professors at the universities, executives, MBAs, CPAs, attorneys. These are advanced courses to teach you what you should and shouldn't do in retirement and teach you about all the levers. There's really like 20 to 30 different levers to pull. You guys think there's two, savings and investments. That's not it. So attend one of our eight-hour courses. They're being taught at all the major universities, and we are streaming them. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. There's more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside financial educators Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We've been telling you about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. And as Kirk has been pointing out, these are advanced retirement planning courses. So these are designed for people who know that they've worked hard, they've set aside a nice amount of money that they want to make sure lasts throughout their retirement And they don't want to downgrade their lifestyle. If that's you, if you want to maximize your retirement, you owe it to yourself to register and attend these courses. To do that, you can call 800-240-8981 or you can go online. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Now, on the show today, we've been talking about retirement mistakes, and there are plenty that we can all make. But Kirk and Paul are helping you identify what those are and making sure you avoid them. You know, we've always heard that phrase, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And fear does play a huge role in retirement. Kirk and Paul, let's keep this conversation going. What should we keep in mind? So fear drives the majority of the mistakes in retirement, right? So the problem is many of the people, particularly who attend our courses, don't recognize that they have or are going to have, they may not right now, or they're going to have fear, right? Often we meet people at the courses when we're teaching the class and through a series of interactions and questions and dialogue we have, we realize in, 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 I think baby boomers almost wear it like a badge of honor that they did not panic during 2008 financial crisis. They did not panic most recently during the COVID crash. They often feel like they are disciplined investors and they don't have a, a lot of anxiety as it, as it applies to their finances because they feel like they've got their arms around and have a handle on it. Paul and I and, and all of the instructors at the foundation know that this isn't the case. Look, please admit to yourself that you didn't panic because you were receiving a paycheck from your employer to make sure your bills were being taken care of and that you could live the lifestyle you were living. And if the market went down while you were working, it just meant your retirement savings was going down and that more often than not, you had time and it would likely recover at some point. Once you retire, Paul, we talk about this all the time, your relationship with money is going to change. You will never be more vulnerable and have more anxiety associated with your money. So, and we know this, we we know this to be fact, statistics support, This We know that during the COVID crash, 35% of people over the age of 65 panicked in March during the crash. It's because you are vulnerable. There's no one else paying you a paycheck and you have a pile of money and you see it go down 20, 30, 40, 50%. You're going to react differently. And this is why most retirees that we meet, Paul, allow short-term market events to dictate their spending decisions, their vacation decisions, their investing decisions, whether they're going to retire or not. It's always the short-term event that's driving these decisions. And it's because they don't know all the levers that are available to pull in these cases of these events. Because Paul, in retirement, they're going to have four to seven major market in life events that are going to cause a lot of fear and anxiety. And if they don't have the right levers to pull and pivot to, they're going to change their lifestyle in those moments. And that's not freedom. No, it's not freedom. You know, 
if, if I can add one more piece to, to this puzzle, you know, I mean, obviously the biggest issue, as you point out, point out is that, you know, people, are, your relationship with money changes as we get older, right? And, and, you know, it's easy not to panic when you're getting a paycheck. The other piece of this fear issue is that we all, as we age, as we all age, we are facing issues that create, that make life more challenging. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care, you know, who you are. Age alone is, is difficult. It's hard to get older, right? We're losing control of our faculties. We're not as sharp as we used to be. We have friends who are passing. Our own health is declining, right? We're not working anymore. Fear is, an, is, is for most people, is part of the aging process, no matter what. So if, you're, if we're all sort of vulnerable to this, and at the same time, no, you know, you, you, you've not planned for your retirement, right? It, it just, it's, it's a perfect storm for people to make really bad decisions, really bad decisions because they're allowing this fear, this lack of control to get, to get involved. Yeah, and the only way to get that control, Paul, honestly, is, look, look again, it, it, let, let me take a step back. If you're the average retiree retiring with two hundred thousand dollars, it's really it's really quite simple, honestly. It's much more simple. There aren't a lot of levers to pull. You got to protect your principal. You have to. You should probably pay off your home. There's a lot of things. The conventional wisdom applies to you and should apply to you. But when you have more resources, that gives you a lot more levers you can pull, and places to pivot at different times at the right time. Look, the key to this, the key to this is to take income from the right places at the right times, and this will prevent you from outliving your money, period. I mean, it just will. To, own, to know those places, you need a tremendous amount of education, and unfortunately, the financial service industry is not going to teach you this because it would expose them that they're still playing the accumulation game they're still teaching you how to grow your wealth we're going to talk about it next segment paul because returns on your investment your returns the things that you focused on your whole life is not what is going to drive how much income you're comfortable taking in your success in retirement i promise you you had 30 plus years to your money was just sitting there and you were growing that money it's changing you are now going to have to pull money from these accounts. And knowing the right accounts to pull them from is going to give you that freedom to avoid making the number one mistake, which is sequence of return risk, right? Which I know we need to talk about too today is sequence of return risk. So we're going to encourage you. We're talking about seven to eight hours. Every single professional athlete, any of you professionals, you've trained for your careers, your jobs. To be a great athlete, they train. They train every day. You need to educate yourself here. You're not going get, to get on Google your books. You need to come to a charity that's going to spend eight hours of time walking you through what a comprehensive, advanced retirement plan looks like. So you know all the levers that can be pulled, and then you know who, if someone's helping you, understands what they're doing or not. It's an eight-hour course taught at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981 to register. And we'll be right back. Happy to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler from the Retirement Education Foundation. Two easy ways to get signed up for the foundation's courses. These are deep dives into all things retirement planning. You can call 800-240-8981. Or go online, retirementplanningedu.org. You can find a location, a date that works best for you, best for your schedule, but make plans to do it. Keep in mind, these courses do fill up quickly, so make plans to do that today. 800-240-8981 or online at retirementplanningedu.org. 
Org. I've been talking with Kirk and Paul today about retirement mistakes. And boy, when it gets to retirement, you don't want to make a mistake. So Kirk and Paul, how do we avoid some of these next mistakes? What are What's on the list? Well, we'll keep saying it. It starts with um, unbiased education. And it's got to be a deep dive. It takes You got to take a lot of time. Look, you've spent your whole life accumulating your wealth and you've done a great job doing it. I, sincerely, the baby boomer generation has been the most successful financial generation in history. You've done a great job and you're really good at it. Now, I'm not picking on anyone, but really, honestly, there's only about two levers that you can pull to be successful here. And it's it's just not that complicated. It required discipline, which is amazing. The discipline to be able to save and then the discipline to be invested. You're talking about the two levers while we're working. While we're working, while right. you're accumulating wealth. Yeah. That's that's how you had so much success. You were good savers and you were disciplined and invest your money and you stayed invested. That, if you did those two things, you turned out really, really well, right? Once you retire, this is, and I'm sure you guys have heard this, This be enter, you're entering something called the distribution phase. Now, what is going to drive performance in the distribution phase there's about 20 levers that you're going to need to pull to be truly successful and to avoid mistakes. I know it's not what you hear every day, but for those people with resources, if you want an efficient retirement plan that gives you freedom to spend more aggressively and not underlive what you otherwise could be spending on, you're going to need to recognize that performance is not driven by the investments you choose. I know People are not going to believe me when you first hear this, but when you're done with the class, you will. The investments aren't going to drive this. Investment performance isn't what drives success in retirement. It's which accounts you pull your money out of during which type of market event is going to drive your success. Managing your tax liabilities, right? You need to remember most of your resources are saved in a retirement account. And I know you think that is your retirement account, but it's not. It's really a joint account. It's a joint account that is yours and the government's. You've never paid any tax on that money. And so when you're 72 years old, you're going to be forced to take money out. You'll get your share and the government's going to get their share. To have freedom, to avoid mistakes, you need to know when you should be pulling money out of those accounts. When maybe you should be Roth converting. If you're philanthropic and you give to charity, how do you use some of your charitable planning to offset some of those taxable events? There are so many more levers that you need to know where to pull to drive performance in retirement, and it's not your investments. Right, right. You know, I really loved what you just said, which is, and it's so true, right? These, these retirement accounts, joint accounts, they're joint accounts. And, 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 and I love that. And the reality is I don't think most people want to be married with the government. Like I, I, like I don't think the average person loves the idea of having a joint account with the government. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, right, if you really want to have control over your future freedom, we talk about freedom all the time, right? The best way to have freedom is not to depend on the government, right? It's not to rely on what the government's going to do in terms of future taxes, we all know taxes are going up. I mean, there's anyone who thinks taxes aren't going up is not really, I'm sorry to say, living in a reality here, right? right? We all know taxes are going up, but we don't know how much they're going to go up, right? Yep. And, and if your joint account is with the government and the government's going to dictate that, but we don't know what they're going to do in the future, I, I'd rather, I'd, personally, I'd rather get away from it. Paul, we give in the course a lot of examples of different people with the same assets, same types of Two people wanting $150,000 a year in retirement to live on. That's what they want. One, because they didn't plan and didn't know the levers to pull, needed to take out $190,000 a year to get pay taxes to live on their hundred and fifty. dollars And the other person took had to take out $156,000 a year, pay their taxes to live on their hundred and fifty. Which Paul, one? that's forty thousand dollars <laughs> right. less a year in taxes. That wasn't your investments that drove that. It's knowing which account to take out of what at what time is what drove that. Now, next segment, Paul, we're going to talk about sequence of return risk, which is the next variable that drives performance in retirement. Sequence of return risk is the number one mistake by far. Not even close. You want to stick around and hear this if you don't know what sequence of return risk is. That is the number one risk 
that will cause many people to outlive their money and or really, really perform poorly. They can have average rates of returns of 10% a year, pull out their 5% a year to live on, and outlive money in 17 years because of the sequence of the returns, not the performance of the returns. That's not what it is. And I know people struggle with this because our industry doesn't talk about it. Academia has been talking about it forever, Paul. Sequence of return risk has been a documented, well-studied problem for many, many years, but all the big firms have suppressed it. They don't even talk to the public about it going into retirement. It's the number one risk. So two things. One is, if you want to, we're going to talk about sequence of return risk in the next segment. But if you want to learn more about sequence of return risk, we've created a white paper and an interactive calculator so you can plug around with different returns at different times, taking out different withdrawal rates to see the impact that has on your retirement dollars. You can All you have to do is go to our website which is retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And while you're there, I'm going to strongly encourage you to sign up for one of our eight-hour courses. We teach us over one, one full Saturday, eight hours, or two evenings, three and a half hours each evening, taught at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi campus, and the Troy campus, Oakland University. We also have a learning center right in Livonia we teach from, and we are streaming the classes directly from the universities to you in your home if you feel more comfortable staying in your home because of COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at that website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you haven't signed up for the retirement intensive courses that are sponsored by the foundation, do that right now. You can call 800-240-8981 or you're welcome to go online and register at retirementplanningedu.org. Now, these are held at local universities, and you can attend in person or online. You can attend virtually in the comfort of your own home, but do that today before those courses get filled up. On the show today, we're talking about mistakes, common mistakes that people make when they're doing their retirement planning and how to identify those, get out in front of them so that you don't make those same mistakes. You know, Kirk, one of the mistakes people make is about something that's not very well known, but boy, it has a big impact. And that sequence of returns risk, tell us about that. Well, it's, I think I say this every time we talk about it, it's the dirty secret the financial service industry doesn't really want retirees to understand. Because if you understood this, you would then require our industry to do more advanced comprehensive retirement planning. Sequence of return risk is why they created the 4%, one of the reasons why they created the 4% rule also, to oversimplify it. And then they tell you, Protect your principal so that when we have market volatility, you just spend less. That was their planning for you. Sequence of return risk is having a bad market event while withdrawing money from those accounts. And the impact of that, if anyone's familiar with compound interest, it, it does it works in the reverse order. And it's just as impactful as you're taking withdrawals out of your account as it was when you were saving monies to your account right? So you're pulling your 5% a year out or your 4% a year out. The market's down. You hit a recession. It's down 15. Your portfolio is down 15, 20%. Now you're 24% behind. The next year, the market's down, caught 10%. Now you're 34% behind. Plus you took your 4% out. You're 38% behind. You can't catch up. You're dead. If you have a market event in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. It is terrible, Paul. I know in our class, we show an example of two people with a million dollars that both had an average rate of return of over 10% a year. That's the average return. It fluctuated, but it was the average. And with a 10% average rate of return, they both felt it was safe to take out 5% a year to live on. Makes sense. If I'm going to earn 10% and I'm only going to withdraw 5%, I should never outlive my money. 
Well, one of the portfolios that did well early had $2.8 million left 20 years later. The other portfolio that had a bad event early in retirement ran out of money in 17 years. They had an average 10% of rate of return, only took out 5% a year, and ran out of money in 17 years. That is sequence of return risk. Go to our website and play with the calculators. You'll learn about it. You know, I, I wish there was a way we could magically interview every listener right now. Because I would guarantee you over 90% of the people who are listening to what you just said mm -hmm. would say to you, their solution is, okay, when the market goes down, they will spend less. I, uh, no I guarantee question. It. Not over 90%. We'll say, okay. Well, one of two things. They'll spend less or they'll just keep a lot in savings, cash and savings. Cash or cash or cash. Which those is, are the two solutions. And where do those solutions come from? Where do they Where do they hear this? The financial services. The financial services. That's been the solution to the single greatest risk that we all face in retirement is, is either don't spend or have a ton of cash. And, and, and you said this earlier, right? At those joint accounts that we have with the government. IRAs and 401ks. The, IRAs and 401ks. The government doesn't allow, they don't allow you to, to to choose one of them, right? They don't allow you to not take money because at 72, you're being forced to take money whether you want to or not. That's the crazy part, Paul. These plans that are being created for people that are approaching retirement in their 60s, they don't, they don't tell you when you're in your 70s, you don't have a choice. You have to take out. At 72 years old, it's about 4%. By the time you are 80 years old, you have to take out about 6%. It keeps going up every year. They don't care. The government doesn't care if the market's up or down that year. They don't care. You still have to take your withdrawal. And that's how sequence of return traps occur and destroy people in retirement, Paul. It's also, by the way, the reason why people allow short-term market events to drive whether they spend, whether they go on vacation, whether they do home improvements. And folks, I... I I know we all think we're invincible, but let us tell you, we in our private practice, over a thousand people, we're, take, we're responsible for way over a billion dollars now. We're telling you, a lot of people die in their 50s and 60s and 70s. A lot. Perfectly healthy people die. And if you're going to wait for the market, the recession to get better or a better president that you might like before you're going to spend because you're fearful about living your money, that is not freedom, and that's not why you spent 30 years serving money so you can have this retirement. That is not freedom. If you plan properly, there are levers. You can pull. You can go to another account that is there just for those market events so that we can pivot and take income from this other account to eliminate that sequence of return risk and then go back to the other account when the markets come back. It's, it's just knowing all the levers and when and where to pull them. Right, right. Well, I, I, you know, I, I think, I, I think most people don't realize. I, I mean, I just think the average person before you in, are in that situation, you don't realize how impactful that is, right? I, you know, it's easy to say, well, if I get to that point, I'll just take out less money. But I, and that's nobody's retirement plan. And and when you're in it, right? When you're in it and you're enjoying your life, and all of a sudden we have a thirty, forty percent market correction, and all of a sudden you're not doing anything that you want to do. Is that really what you want? Is that really the retirement you want for your future? Nobody wants that retirement for their future. But if you know nothing else, if you if no one ever has ever showed you another solution to it, that's all you know. And and that's why, and we spent a I mean, we spent a lot of time in the course covering this topic. Over an hour. Right. A lot of time because we recognize it's the single biggest risk. And also for most people out there, this is what this is what's going to cause them havoc. Yeah, Paul, we don't just show it to, we teach it to them. Showing is one thing, but teaching the mechanics to understand how to avoid this, because because we didn't even talk about it, but the more you have to take out because of taxes, impact sequence of return risk. This is like a gigantic puzzle that you guys are putting together. You've got resources. You've got pensions, lump sums. You've got Social Security. You've got taxable accounts. You have tax deferred accounts. You've got a lot of stuff. you got to put these pieces together to get you the best outcome. If you don't know all the levers and how all the pieces need to fit together, you cannot have the real freedom you've earned and you will underlive what you otherwise could be living. So attend one of our eight-hour courses at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. 
retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. There's more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Happy to have you with us on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler there with the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you gotten registered yet for the courses we've been telling you about this past hour? We want you to register today. Why? Well, because this is your best bet toward gaining more confidence about your retirement future. You don't want to leave this portion of your life to chance. It does take a specific plan, and there are a lot of moving parts in a modern retirement. Here's how you can get registered. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call to register 800 240 8981. Kirk and Paul saw a statistic, wanted to bring it to your attention and share it with our listeners as well. It says that 48% of people who retire, well, they end up retiring way earlier than they ever planned to. I'm guessing that's because life tends to throw us curveballs. Am I right? Well, yeah, I think this is the the piece that people, and we're a little bit arrogant. I mean, honestly, it's just, especially men. This, I think men are more guilty of, of this than women. We're just we're invincible. We think we get to do what we want to do on our terms. Like we're going to pick and choose when we get to retire. And the, the research doesn't support that. Now I know people are going to say, yeah, but I'm an executive. I'm an engineer. I am needed. I am so valuable. I'm indispensable. Okay. Look, <laughs> as we get older, we are replaceable. That's just the fact. It's In fact, if you're a pilot, you don't have a choice. At 65 years old, you no longer can fly a plane, right? That's it. So 48% of people do not get to choose when they get to retire, whether it's a, a recession that's going on, a health event, a family event, a pandemic, or you just, your skill set is beginning to diminish and there's someone that can be more efficient for them and more profitable for them. So they replace you. That's what happens, right? And so this circles back to the importance of why you don't wait until you retire to start planning. At our courses, we're going to teach you what takes us in our private practice, it takes us 40 to 60 hours to build a retirement plan for our clients. That's how much time we spend. We don't give a free roadmap to retirement for the next 10 callers for every person that calls into our office. We can't. It's 40 to 60 hours to truly build a customized individual plan for each one of you in our private practice, okay? So in our class, this is why we spend eight hours to show you what it takes to construct a plan and all the things that are being considered, all the levers that can be pulled depending on each individual's personal situation. Now, through that class and learning what it takes to build a plan, a retirement plan, you begin to identify where the mistakes and flaws on your current plan is, like your surviving spouse, right? Legacy isn't just your kids. Paul, it's the surviving spouse who will end up with less income when someone dies. The surviving spouse will have less income. Their taxes are going to go way up. And Medicare costs often for the demographic of people that come to our classes will also go way up. That's a very avoidable mistake and trap, right? I mean, we, we talk about in that class. We, we do. And strangely, one of the few things that people actually think about, right? I mean, people just assume that assuming you're married, that when, when, you know, one of you will pass first, people don't typically die together, right? That, that, that you know, legacy is really just about the children, right? The, the end of the day, if you don't do a good job planning for the day, one of you passes first, that surviving spouse can get into a world of hurt, right? A it's, world of hurt. It's not that hard to plan for, but it does require knowing the strategies in advance and putting in place. It's one of the reasons why we do so much Roth conversions. It's one of the reasons we sometimes have life insurance for the surviving spouse. So they don't part have ta- part of tax planning. It's a huge part it's of tax planning. Huge. That's the big deal is making I will say in our private practice, the majority of our clients, the surviving spouse will pay little or no income taxes because of the things we did in their 60s and 70s in anticipation that one of them are going to die. We know that that's going to happen. So if we know an outcome is going to happen, we can find a better path to get them through it. But it takes planning, understanding that planning. How about fees that come out in the class? It's remarkable as we're going through the class and teaching how to build a retirement plan, the amount of fees that people are paying that they don't know they're paying, like mutual funds. I mean, look, guys, girls, I know Vanguard is great. We love Vanguard. 
I'm telling you, there are so many hidden fees in your mutual funds. I don't care if you've got a fancy institutional fund or a no-load fund. Look, read the studies. You're paying somewhere between 1.5% and 2.5% a year in fees. That's something we cover. Net expense ratio is not all the fees you are paying. There's a lot of hidden fees or all the fees in your 401ks. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me there are fees in the 401k? I know. Do you know 65% of Americans don't think there's fees in 401ks and they don't think Medicare, they're not paying for Medicare? Because they think people work for free. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so these are the things that are taught in the class as we're showing you how to construct a plan because to construct the plan, you need to know what fees you're paying. <laughs> you do. You have to. If you're paying. What about, to, what about, what about those, those people who are listening who have an advisor who not only charges a fee but also – gets commissions on the same things they sell, right? Rap fees. Rap, rap fees, right? Well, that's the last thing we do in the class, pause. How do you choose an advisor? How do you do background checks? How do you know how they get paid? What interview questions should I have when I interview to hire somebody new? That is a big part of the end of the class. It's the last 45 minutes of the class walking you through that. Right. What does a plan really look like to see if you have something like that or if the person you're you're interviewing to help you can produce something like that. That's a big part of it. Last thing I want to talk about, Paul, because it's a big topic. This whole inflation rigmarole that our industry is pushing out there saying that you seniors have to have lots of money in your 80s and 90s. There's three phases of retirement. Go, go, slow, go, no, go. You are not going to spend in your 80s anywhere like you did in your 60s and 70s. Nowhere close. We will teach you how to manage income needs around inflation in the class. We educate you with data so you understand what you can or can't do when it comes to income to manage inflation. So, seven, eight-hour course, all the major universities to attend. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can even stream it live from your home if you want as we're in the universities teaching it. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.